Yes, my line. Brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, the co-author and director of the sensational musical hit, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, a man who succeeds every time without really trying, Abe Burroughs. And a gal who just asked me for a job with our road company, the sweetheart <laughs> of the Journal American, Dorothy Kilgallen. I would like to introduce the master of the hounds, or the master of the hunt, or the master of something in Mount Kisco, New York, Mr. Bennett Cerf. I know what hounds you're talking about. Whoop, 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 whoop. The right back up there. Here's our polysyllabic paragon of panel moderators, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Mr. Burroughs, it's nice to see you again. It's Good to see you again, panel. Mr. Daly. You palpitating whatever he calls you. <laughs> did he say I was palpitating? What did he say, palpitating? Paragon. Polysyllabic paragon. Like the New York paragon? Is that what is it? The same thing. Very good paper. It's a movie theater on 44th Street. <laughs> I get even later. You know, you can all go ahead. It's all right. All today. right. We're just we gay. Some, We're just gay tonight. Just gay. Well, we've got some interesting occupations for all of you to be gay with and some nice people who brought them here. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. All right. Now we're to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Anthony. F. Madarisi, right? <laughs> Master Sergeant, United States Marine Corps. That's right. Sir. Right. Nice to have you with us. Where are you from? Adelphi, Maryland. Adelphi, Maryland. That's right. Sergeant, may I present our panel? Do do? Now, would you join me over here, Sergeant? Do you know how we keep score and what's my line? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> well, panel, you all know that our guest is a Marine. Now, the question is, what does our Marine do? What is his specific occupation? We can tell you that Sergeant Matarisi is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Sergeant Matarisi, do you, may I rule out that you have anything whatsoever to do with the astronauts? Yes. <clears throat> uh, is your service one uh, that um, puts you in charge of some particular branch in the Marine Corps. Well, when you say branch... I mean some particular duty, some special thing in the Marine Corps. Yes. Is it, um, is it something other than uh, dispensing uh, service such as clothing and uh, doctoring and that sort of thing? Yes. Does it have anything to do with entertainment in the Marine Corps? Yes. Uh, would you be uh, in charge of radio or television operations in any way in the Marine Corps? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Burrow. Uh, has it something to do with music? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, well, now music. 
uh, uh, is it something to do with music in Washington? Yes. Oh. There was such a sound from the ladies. Does it have anything to do with our first lady? Yes. Are you in charge of some form of entertainment for functions that our first lady gives? Sometimes. It's a marine band. Well, it's sometimes. How does sometimes go? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, what uh, I think what the sergeant means to suggest is that he's not in charge of all elements of um, entertainment and functions which are given by our you, first lady. You conduct a marine uh, band group. Yes. Yeah, I think actually what I have to do is to throw all of them over. The, well, I, there are a lot of Marine Grand Band okay, groups. The oh. Marine Band. Oh, it's the great one in Washington. Well, actually, no. The sergeant is a part of the great one, which uh, Colonel Schopel uh, directs. But the sergeant has a very interesting particular duty. He is actually the leader of the White House Dance Band, which is made up out of the complement of the United States Marine Band. <laughs> Ed, the reason I threw in the towel is that you were completely right, and it could get uh, very involved. There is yeah, an addition. Yeah, you know, it was very interesting. There was a gasp. I must say, there was a gasp of admiration, and it could only, I just felt that it could only have to do with our first lady. It was quite interesting. Well, there's a White House orchestra, which the colonel leads himself, but in the East Ballroom, Sergeant Matarisi will have the dance band, and he has a jazz combo. His do they basic play, combo do is they play for the twist? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the Marine Twist. <laughs> the Marine Twist. That's a special. How long have you been in the Marine, Sergeant? Almost eight years. Almost eight years. You'll get another hash mark in, right. in very soon. In a couple months. What was your background before you went in the Marines? Well, I uh, studied at Eastman School of Music oh. and also studied for my masters at Columbia. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great band, the Marine Band. I Thank you. Stood in I'm open of admiration of it for many, many years. I saw you last spring at that. Um, at the Gridiron, gridiron Center, yes, you all did a wonderful job. My compliments to the Colonel, and many thanks to you for being our guest on What's Thank My Life. Thank you very life. much. Nice <laughs> very good beginning, panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? Suzanne Bolt. Is that right? Uh, is it, uh, Miss or Mrs. Bolt? Mrs. Bolt. Mrs. Bolt. And where are you from, Mrs. Bolt? In Colorado. Whereabouts in Colorado? Fort Collins. Colorado. Fort Collins in Colorado. May I present our panel? And where Bolt. is Mr. Bolt? <laughs> <laughs> and will you pay no attention to Mr. Burroughs to join me over here? <laughs> Now, do you, do you know how we keep score on What's My Line, Mrs. Bowman? Yes, sir. Fine. Then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Bolt is self-employed and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with um, Abe Burroughs. Self-employed, right? You said self-employed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, could I, would I be a man to use your service offhand? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that it's it's possible and probable. And I heard a, <laughs> I heard an odd laugh, which was again. not a gasp of admiration. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I in need of your services? <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> but you might differ with me on that conclusion, Abe. No, I would say this. It, it, there's a likelihood that you might avail yourself uh, with of Mrs. Bolt's services, but I would have to agree that it's, it's unlikely. I'm trying to think, what do I need? <laughs> uh, <laughs> would your services improve my general well-being? <laughs> Yes, I would say so. The specific service which Mrs. Boltz would convey would, I think, tend to affect your well-being in your present condition if you needed this service, yes. <laughs> would I use your services at home? No. No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. 
Well, to get off poor Abe for a minute, if any man came to you in need of your services, would he look better when he finished, or when you finished? <laughs> No, no, I don't think so. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Oh, Sir. Mrs. Bounce, uh, do you come into physical contact with the people whom you are performing your service for? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. I was hoping Bennett would be the one to ask the question, do I need your service? Just not having any luck tonight, that's all. <laughs> but something does happen to the individual that changes them in one way or another as no, a result all, of your... No, all we meant to convey in answer to Abe's question was that if you were in a position to use the services which you Mrs. Bolts has to convey, in that condition, we would tend to agree that it would improve your well-being. Would you mind repeating that, sir? <laughs> The audience laughed, and I can rule out that Mrs. Bolts has nothing to do with nuts and bolts. You can, I can rule that out. You can rule that out. You should have ruled it out as a matter of taste, honey. Well, you being a nut, I thought maybe there was a tie up there. Uh, if, uh, if somebody had been out and was tired and had had a long, hard time doing something or other, would that person be better off because of your services? I mean, you know, if uh, somebody was intoxicated or hurt in some way. No. No, I no. would think we'd have to answer that. No, I'm going to give you here a small clue, only because I think it's fair. While we did announce, and very properly, that Mrs. Bolts is self-employed, uh, it is probable that you would consider that uh, the line that she has is one that would be a salaried line. Now, that's a hint if I ever saw <laughs> George, thank you very much. <laughs> now, she's self-employed and she gets a salary. That's the way I see it. Uh, you, I, I know, I think... Uh, does she? Ha do you have anything to do with um, food? Yes, I do. Ah. Uh, in other words, do you have anything to do with, with the entertainment aspect of food, parties, things like that? No. No, no parties. That's but five out and five we to go, Miss Kildallan. We've got food. Didn't help me a bit. Well, that's food. Um, she's dietitian. I'm going to ask the question that Bennett uh, didn't ask. Could Bennett use your services? Oh, there are many people who would like to see Bennett use. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy Kiljallen. Well, now, Bennett doesn't need to diet, so may I assume that this has nothing to do with reducing? No. Yes, it has nothing to do with reducing that. Uh, do you have to have a special education uh, for your type of work? Not necessarily um, a graduate education, but training of some sort? Yes, some training. Is uh, do you usually, usually work in the daytime? Yes. Do you wear anything than an ordinary, other than an ordinary street dress? Oh, well, for this area of the country, no, it isn't an ordinary. No, it's, it's yeah. usual. Clothing, and it wouldn't be a uniform or, or area of the area. country. Six down and four to go, Mr. Surf. I'm going to give you one more minute. Now, Mrs. Yes, Bolts, you said you had something to do with food. Would you also have something to do with drink? No. Well, it's a small question, Wendy. Gee. Yes, please. You're speaking of fluids in the mass, are you? Well, drink is usually fluid. Uh, 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 I don't remember ever drinking a solid. One thing about that is you throw them. Well, they're all of in a martini. <laughs> well, if you were speaking just to fluids generally, we would give you a yes. Do you have anything to do at all, Miss Bolts, with uh, suggesting uh, ways to, uh, to build people up by the, uh, by the things that they eat and drink, pre preparing uh, no. diet? Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Well, it wouldn't have to, anything to do with tearing people down, I'm sure. Is it, um, is it a food that would be eaten by animals as well as human beings? <laughs> Some say so. <laughs> <laughs> Some say so was the answer you got. Uh, is the, does the food have any no, medicinal let me quality? Here, let me say here, Miss Arlene, uh, the food could be eaten by animals, but we would not suggest that it is prepared uh, or has any direct connection with animals. Well, does it have any medicinal qualities? Medicinal qualities. That's eight down and two to go. You want to try one more shot at it, Abe? Has it anything to do with health foods? No. 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 Ms. Kilgallen? Does it have anything to do with law enforcement? <laughs> My part doesn't. But well, I mean, is it in any way connected? Yes. Uh, do you get them after the law has been enforced? Yes. Do you have something to do with the prison? Yes. 
Uh, are you the uh, head of a prison? The what? Head of a prison? No, but Dorothy, you're very close. You're Actually, Mrs. Both is the cook. She cooks. In okay. the county jail. That's the easy reason. <laughs> Now, what's it got to, I want to know, what's it got to do with Bennett? Or, or, a, or, or me, or anybody, but well, Bennett you, especially. You said Bennett. Now, well, I just said I knew a lot of people, and I wouldn't be among them. You know, I'd like to see Bennett avail himself of this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to this sort of hostility. <laughs> Is it President Cook self-employed? Well, actually, no, yes, because it's on a contract basis, Bennett. Mrs. Boltz has a problem, which is that she almost has to start crime waves to do well because she gets paid on the number of prisoners who are to be fed under a contract, which she has with the county jail, you see. And, Mr. So Daly, one more thing, one of my questions. If you've ever been in jail, you'll know that food is the only entertainment. <laughs> He's been there before. He's been there before. I said entertainment. I was right. You were absolutely right. Mrs. Bones, thank you for giving us much entertainment. It's nice to have had you on one. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Today. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as you all know, the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in this uh, particular case, a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with uh, Bennett, sir. Has your name, within the past year, been on the front page of either Variety or the Motion Picture Daily? Yes. Miss Francis? Are you primarily known for your work in motion pictures? Yes. Mr. Burroughs? Are you primarily a girl? <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Well, it sounds like Jane Mansfield, so I, I suppose it couldn't be, but are you Jane Mansfield? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sturf. When you appear in pictures, do you ever sing and dance? <clears throat> yes. Miss Francis? Uh, have you, in the last year, appeared in one of the spectacular pictures? Yes. Mr. Burroughs? Uh, which are they? Uh, was it a biblical picture? <laughs> no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you Missy Gaynor? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Was the picture in which you appeared West Side Story? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Are you primarily a leading woman? <laughs> Mr. Burroughs? <sighs> What's spectacular? Uh, Thank you, thank you. Uh, are you a blind? Think it over. <laughs> What's the question? Are you a blind? <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Have you been known to do imitations of Marilyn Monroe on television? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Seth. Uh, are you under contract to one of the big studios? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever received an Academy Award? Yes. Oh. Mr. Burroughs? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Celeste Holmes. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. I thought you had dashed to a business conviction. <laughs> Joanne Woodward. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sam. <laughs> <Sir. laughs> Uh, and you're, in the most recent picture that you made, did you do a lot of singing in it? Yes. Miss Francis? The most recent picture she made, did she do a lot of singing in it? Um, have you ever appeared in the, uh, in the theater? Yes. Mr. Burroughs? In the theater. In the theater. <laughs> Academy Award. Can Academy you think Award. Got it last year? <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, uh, a blonde girl, Academy Award, peer in the picture. Who can that be? Paul Newman. <laughs> Judy Holliday. Uh, well, did you, did you say Judy Holliday? No, nobody said me. No, I didn't say it. Go ahead. I'll say Judy Holliday. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'll pass to Bennett. Well, I was the one who said Judy Holliday. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got you stuck. Should we have a conference? Uh, Let us have a second on the next All right. Um, Could it be Roz Russell? She's appeared in this. She's, she's not a blonde. She's not a blonde. Never not lately. But she wore a lot of wigs in some pictures. No. Uh, Mandy Maine, no. Do you, make, you also make a lot of records in which you sing solo? No. That's ten down and no more to go, and congratulations on disguising your voice. Oh and there you are, friends, Shirley Jones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alma Gantry, Alma Gantry, best supporting Thank actress. Now, what was yes. the spectacular? The Music well, Man, which uh, the, music the Music Man, man with Bob Preston is, is starring in it. That's right. And, uh, we say Meredith Wilson. With chariots and things. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try to get the a chariot. Spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> very good, Miss Shirley. Thank you very Thank much. You, it was John. a lot of fun. Hope I you enjoyed, enjoyed being with us. Nice to see you. Another contestant after this message. So you want and now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? T.J. Dane, right there. <laughs> Mr. Dane, where are you from? I'm from Belmar, New Jersey. Belmar, New Belmar, Jersey. New Mr. Jersey. Dane, may I present our distinguished panel? Hello. Would you join me over here? Do you know how we keep scoring, Mr. Dane? Yes, I do. Fine. We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, you have about two minutes to try to get this. Mr. Dane is salaried and deals in a product. Let's begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, could I use this product, Mr. Dane? No. That's one down to nine to go, Mr. Church. <laughs> uh, could, could anything alive use this product, Mr. Church? Yes. Dane? Might it be an animal? No. Well, let me say that Mr. Dane is a victim, Mr. Dane. <laughs> but under certain circumstances, not necessarily those intended uh, initially. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Ben. Would, would men be more apt to use this product than uh, animals? Yes. Uh, would this product ever be taken internally? No. no. <laughs> You're out of date to go, Miss French. Uh, is it a product that would be seen on the person? No. That's three out and seven to go, Mr. Burr. Is, is it a, a, uh, a, 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 a product that is used uh, for reasons of health? No. Four out and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it something other than clothing? Yes. yes. Is it something that does something to the man? No. no. Five down and five to Why go, Mr. Sir. About Would it? this product be more apt to be used outside the house than inside the house? Yes. Uh, would it be used on the property surrounding the house, possibly? Yes. Could be. Could be. Would it, would it improve in any way the garden or property or neighborhood of the house? No. No. Six down and four to go. We have time for one question, Miss Francis. Is it, an, is it some kind of an a implement that you might hold in your hand? Mm, not very well, no. No, I don't think so, and unfortunately we've run out of time. It's, this, was, this is fun, though, because it's a very odd product. Mr. Dane buys telephone poles for Westinghouse Electric Company. Western Electric. Western Electric. Western Electric. Western Electric. Western Electric. Mr. Dane travels all over the country. They use them for toothpicks? Or they use them, and Western Electric uses them to hold up those things Western called telephones. Don't you think we use the telephone? Well, yeah, but not telephone poles. How That's do you know? Unless Dorothy climbs telephone poles for exercise. I do. Sir, may I thank you very thank much you for being our guest. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> now, I'm afraid I used up all the time, and with your permission, panel, I will say. A fond good night to our good audience from all of us, and thanks very much for being with us once again on What's 
My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. Johnny Olsen speaking. The preceding program was pre-recorded.